Do you even, did you even know what a meat pie was? All the insects that were gonna kill you, the animals that were gonna kill you. When you come here and you get a large drink, it's the size of the kitty drinks back at home. I did it a few times and I got a few weird looks. Um, so I kind of don't think it's legal. They just flicked us off. So we should start out by saying that this is our opinions based on the places that we've went to. Australia is a vast country and there's no way we could go to all those places in three months. And on top of that also, the, the seasons change so much. So like, this is our opinions based on where we were during the summer months. So Australia was the start of our nine month trip and we were in Australia for three months. We took a plane from Sydney to Brisbane and then we went from Brisbane um, up the East Coast to all the way up to Cape Tribulation, which is actually um, home of the Daintree Rainforest. Here's our takeaways from the three months we were there. Meat pies are sold everywhere. <laughs> Do you even, did you even know what a meat pie was? Before? I didn't know what a meat pie was. And I probably could have left it that way. <laughs> One person in our family liked the meat pies and that was Crosby. They're sold everywhere. They're every store, every gas station, there's a meat pie. Gravy, minced meat, and like a pie crust. And they weren't very good. One of our biggest takeaways was that Hardly anybody wears shoes. You can be in the grocery store and people will be barefoot and in, or shirtless at that, but not many people wear shoes. Another thing that was really cool with Australians is they seem to really appreciate nature and, and the wildlife. And there's a lot of dangerous wildlife in Australia and they just seem to respect that and they coexist with it. Every person you would talk to about like a crocodile or their venomous snakes, they would be like calling them beautiful creature. <laughs> the adjectives they use to describe these nasty lethal creatures <laughs> was just so funny. I just love their appreciation for their world and their environment. We were up in the Daintree and he's like, oh yeah, these spiders are very venomous. They could kill your kids instantly and we we're like, I had one in my house the other night. First thing I did was I got my dogs out and then I got the spider out and I took the spider where he belongs. And I'm like, where he belongs? He's like, yeah, outside. Road, Road rules. rules. Hmm. Left on red. I still don't know, can we do it or not? So someone should tell us. In, in the United States, if, it's, if you're turning right, you can go on red. So my thinking is if I'm on the left side of the road, I should be able to turn left on red. Did you ever actually ever see somebody turn I never saw them? anyone do it. I did it a few times mm -hmm. and I got a few weird looks. Um, so I kind of don't think it's legal. After three months of being there, we still don't know. But it felt very uncomfortable for people to be behind me and like waiting. Because in the US, if people were behind me waiting on a red light, they would be honking. Oh yeah. No one honked though, for that reason. No, not for that reason. Yeah. They definitely honked for the roundabouts. They didn't honk. They just flicked us off. They gave us the bird. Yeah. They Great. honked at me sometimes. Did they? Mm -hmm. These roundabouts are like three lanes deep. You can go straight in the middle lane or turn right in the middle lane. Or on the far left lane, you have to go all the way around. And so there's arrows everywhere. Far right lane. Far right, yeah. Far left lane, you have to exit first. Usually yeah. first, sometimes not always though. You have to look at the sign coming up to it to see which lane they're going, which direction. Then they all use their blinkers around these roundabouts. I've never used a blinker around a roundabout in the United States. So what you're supposed to do, if you're going left, you put your left blinker on. If you plan on taking the third exit all the way on the right side, you put your right blinker on. Mm -hmm. If you stay straight. If you stay straight, then you don't put your blinker on. But when they're ready to yep. exit out, then they put their left blinker on to signal that they're, they are taking the exit. Beep, 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 beep. But, there's a, but there's your a... blinker will turn off, so then you have to re-put it on. If you're when going you start all the way turning, around, it will come off naturally. And so then I'm like, okay, it went off. Do I repress my blinker for the second time? So it's really confusing. Maybe we overcomplicated this. So most things are very similar to the United States. It's not that big of a whoa culture shock for sure. But there were a few things that we got really <laughs> confused about. <laughs> For the very, very first morning, we go over to the local coffee shop. Like much needed at this point. We had 30 some hours of travel, we were exhausted. So we walk in and I, I ordered a coffee. And she looks at me with a blank stare and she goes, what do you want? I said, could I have a coffee please? And she just stared at me. And, and she's like, I, well, I don't know what you want. And I'm like, and I'm just confused. I'm like, I'm in a coffee shop. I don't know how else to better describe what it is that I want. I just want a cup of coffee. Eventually I found out what I wanted 
was a long black, Mm -hmm. which is not the same thing, but it tasted close enough. And then I order my drink, which my drink I always get is an ice mocha. You know, like the espresso, the milk, over ice, and no cream on top with the chocolate. And I get it, and it's like, it has ice cream in it. Like there's a big doll of ice cream on top. And I'm like, what the heck is this? And so I was super annoyed. (laughs) And so they were so nice. The next morning I go to the same place and I was like, could I like do an ice mocha without ice cream? And they're like, without ice cream? And I was like, yeah, just like with um, milk and no cream on top. In Australia, cream, like full cream is their full cream, like whole milk. Whole milk. And so I was saying cream as in whipped cream. And so then they were thinking I wanted an ice mocha with no milk and no ice cream. So then they're like, so you just want it with water? And I was like, what? And so we had this back and forth, back and forth. Finally, I was just like telling them how to make my drink. And finally they got it and they were like, oh, this is kind of a cool drink. So every coffee shop I would go to, I would have to explain how to bake it. But okay, one more thing on that, the sizes of these drinks, oh my gosh. So like in the United States, when I go to Starbucks and I get a Vente, that's like, you know, 24 ounces of solid, you know, good drink which is really extreme, I know. However, when you come here and you get a large drink, it's the size of the kitty drinks back at home. They are so small. They're like this big. Which is probably okay. Probably, but but now what I do, I just order two. (laughs) I go and get two (laughs) instead of one because then I dump it into my cup at home and it fills about three fourths full with the two. So no tipping is Awesome. awesome. I love no tipping. Yeah, and it's especially great the no tipping thing like when you take like excursions like on boat rides yes. or something like cuz usually a family of 6 we would have to like tip a really good amount and it would be a lot more on our budget. Nobody expects anything more. They don't yeah. even say anything. Amazing. When we were getting ready to come to Australia, everyone was always talking about all the insects that were going to kill you, the animals that were going to kill you. Articles on my phone were coming up about everything. And I was like, maybe we don't go. The perception we had as Americans is is the moment we walked off the airplane, something was going to kill us. But it wasn't really. It's not the case. There are certainly deadly animals and deadly insects. There's no question about that. And you have to be like- Prepared. Prepared and aware. Aware. But it's not as bad as it probably seems when we were researching to come to Australia. And I mean, yeah, we saw crocodile signs a lot of places we went and being aware and I didn't let my kids touch the water where there were crocodiles in the ocean and we had to wear um, stinger suits from the box jellyfish. So there was definitely precautions. However, we, we quickly realized we did not have to live in fear of it. You just have to be aware. So to wrap it up, I I loved, I absolutely loved Australia. It was amazing to me. I mm-hmm. I wish we had so much more time to be able to explore there. Especially and like, you know, we we did the Northeast, but I would love to go to the West Coast side and even, even more south. Central and South and Tasmania. Yeah. There's so many places um, that would be amazing to go and, and, and see. Mm-hmm. So I think we're definitely going to have to go back. So...